Oh, I hope she's not coming up here. Fuck, she is. Mm, Summer reminds me a lot of Sly Cooper. One. Uh, maybe the animation that she had on her. I do like the varieties of this game, though. There was a lot of shit you do. Yeah, I mean, it's still not quite as... I mean, because Harry Potter had a, had a fair bit of variety as well, I suppose. Well, I mean, actually, that might be the one thing that... Because, again, I oh, see we're behind him now. That Like, this feels like such a triumph, like, back in the day as well. Like, like he's guarding that place so that we can't get past him, but we're actually already yeah. behind him, you know. Um, but, yeah, like, this person commented, right? And, and uh, he or she thought that... Um, <laughs> that uh, Harry Potter one was better, and I think they said said something along the same lines. Where we played like the um, the greenhouse level, um, which is actually the level as well where I think we did the whole gnome thing, where we took the gnome throughout the whole level, the gnome chronicles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they they were like, it's basically like you know the architecture is basically a rehash of the first challenge or something or the second challenge you know like they they were going on about how like a lot of the architecture and the challenges were, were like too repetitive which i don't really agree with honestly like i think there's definitely enough variety in the uh, challenges in harry potter 2 but i can sort of see like in some of the architecture i can see where they're coming from but i feel like that's just the general style of the school, anyway. Yeah, that's exactly I, right. I don't think you I, can I really actually call thought it we criticism. trapped Norris there, and that she would not bother us anymore. Ah, oh, she kind of is trapped there. It looks like. Nice. Um, but yeah, so I. But you kind of said the same thing just then by just going like how, you know, this game seems to have a lot of variety. I don't know, like I don't know if this, if with this game it is more the case that one area is more sort of archetypally di archetypically I should say uh, different from the other uh, the, I, they, uh, the other thing I'd say about this game is that creep. like the level lengths are like some are like this this filch challenge is going on for it's fucking forever it's really long this yeah yeah, like the Quidditch match lasted maybe like four minutes. This thing feels like it's gone off for 25 well, I minutes. I thought the Quidditch match lasted way too long, to be honest. Also, the Quirrell challenge lasted for a while, too. Mm hmm Hello again, Harry. Hello, Hello again, again, Harry. Hello again, Harry. How's the bean collecting? I heard about your Quidditch victory. Yes, well victory. Victory. Yes, Onto well done. Well, I can't find what? What a shitty fucking... <laughs> I thought, well, see the most... Dis uh, that's a weird thing, by the way. This is like a weird thing. I think, I guess speedrunners will know the physics behind this. Like, where like, when I like walk up this and I like jump, oh, all of a sudden he jumps like way higher than he normally does. Like, it's like yeah. some weird like thing to do with sort of... I always like this as well, by the way. Like these little sort of peepholes where you can sort of see the sort of the other side of the level that you've just been in i always like there's a lot of detail to this a lot of detail yeah well, yeah i guess even though it is like a a bit more sort of thematic and sort of closed in than harry potter 2 I don't. I don't really mind I that too much. It does make every level feel separate and memorable. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I think there's like a lot of artistic merit to this one, whereas in Harry Potter Two, there's more of a sort of gameplay make level design. Uh, sort of that that aspect of it is much more fleshed out. In this one, it may be more the sort of the actual visual artistry of it that may actually. Mm. In well, some ways, be uh, uh, more interesting. Which one follows the movie better? Like, does this follow the first movie better, or does the other one follow the second movie better? Uh, that's hard to say. But what you can say is that the this one, or, or well, the second one, is much more narrative focused. So there's a lot more. Uh, oh my fuck! Fuck! Shh. That was close. Oh, I just fell. 
Dang it. Um, oh my god, she's right there. She's hissing at me. <gasps> Tits! So it's curtains for Johnny Natrium. Oh, fuck. I thought I was like sandwiched between Norris and... Oh my god, this cunt. She's after me. She's meowing it's like a cat. A... It's a pussy. You should oh. grab her by the pussy. <laughs> oh, I guess I've lost her. But... Uh, <clears throat> so the second one, it's definitely more narrative focused, the game. Um, I sort of talked about this in the first part with Fisher, though. Like, like you know how, like, there's, like, a lot of cutscenes with story and then, like, in between there, like, you're sort of walking up to, like, well, yeah, I, I guess we just, we sort of did talk about that earlier, like, how, you know... You're not just transported to every level, like, there's, like, in-between shit, where you're, like, talking to people, and then you... Like, in Harry Potter 2, there's a lot of, like, follow me, Harry, and you have to, like, follow people around to your next destination. And, yeah, um, exactly. And somehow there's, like, a lot of story stuff that happens in between there. And even in sort of, sort of the cutscenes and stuff like that, whereas in this one... Like, the start of the game is pretty much where Albus Dumbledore, like, in a very gameplay-centric manner, explain, says to you, like, you know, look behind every corner and, you know, search every place because there's many secrets in Hogwarts and stuff like that, you know? Like, it's sort mm. of very meta. It's sort of uh, very game-centric. And in Harry Potter 2 it's much more focused on sort of uh, staying in the in the sort of lore aspect of everything. Now what the fuck? Yeah. Oh my god, I knew just from looking here that this was going to be the room with that mirror in. Oh yeah, it looks That's kind uh, of interesting. Cuz in the of film us. as well. Yeah. Yeah, in the film as well as he is fleeing from Filch, I suppose, f from the library. Or from he Snape or whatever. In. He just, yeah, he just comes randomly across this place. Yeah. Then he runs back to... Which I think Tell this Ron. is weird anyway, that they fucking have this mirror just... Why don't they fucking face it the other way then? You know, face it towards the ward. They don't <laughs> want people looking at it. But yes, uh, Dumbledore says they were actually going to sell it, I believe. Anyway. Yes, yes. Because, like, right after he sees this, he runs to Ron and he says, Look, it's my parents. Can you see them in the mirror? And Ron says, like, Oh, look at me. I'm I'm the fucking Quidditch guy and, you know, I'm the Quidditch captain and shit like that. Oh, Harry, do you reckon this mirror tells us our future? And I was like, Well, no, you nonce. I'm the seeker, you know? Like, Harry's yes. the fucking seeker, you know? Like, this is just, you know, wishful thinking. And that, so he runs to fucking the Gryffindor... From here, he runs to the Gryffindor house sort of room thing. Yes, yes, with, without, the, without the knowledge Anyone of, of Filch or anything. Yeah. And then he runs back to here, and then Ron is gone, and then Dumbledore fucking shows up. I guess Ron goes back, and Harry wants to stay here and stare at his parents. Yeah, and, well, and then Dumbledore shows up. So that does, like, I reckon there is some sort of way that people monitor the students. Like, it's like a, the equivalent of cameras, except they don't need that because they have magic. But, you know, how can they now supervise that? Who's to say they don't have, like, a way of looking into the bathrooms, you know? Mm. Maybe there's some fucking pervy teachers looking in on people pissing. That the mirror showed nothing more or nothing less than the deepest, most our desperate, desperate desires, desires of our hearts. But that and you, Harry, are my deepest desire. The mirror of Erised will be moved to a new home shortly, Dumbledore went on, adding ominously that if he is, yeah, a new home came across it again, he would be prepared. Oh, what do you reckon the new home would be? By the way, the sort of weirdest thing that I thought of as well about like seeing the first film again is like how they moved to this fucking weird like lighthouse type place almost like, the, yes, like this weird yes. rocky place in the middle of fucking nowhere like because everything about those guys it's like supposed to scream like 
we're normal, we hate magic, we hate weirdness and everything, you know, like, because she's such a weird, you know, her sister was such a weirdo, Harry's mother, uh, mm. you know, like, oh, wizards, oh, they're all weird and shit. Wow, the level's still not over, by the way, that's crazy. Oh, fucking uh, hell. But, uh, oh, more Venice, more Venice, remember? <laughs> fucking Tomb Raider 2. We're still in Venice. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> But, um, uh, so, so, and, and yet they're like the crazy kind of people who like all of a sudden move to this absolutely the middle of nowhere where they yes. could in no way continue their sort of normal lifestyle. They have to you quit know, their jobs yeah, because everything. their life is sort of based upon the sort of attitude of the, uh, you know, like Hyacinth Bouquet, you know, trying to be sort of part of this bourgeois um, feigned idea of sort of being normal and high cultured or whatever. Mm. And uh, so in that respect, like they would completely be upheaving their lives, which like is almost like a worse effect than just sending Harry, just actually... Giving Harry the letter and letting him go to Hogwarts. Yeah, what, what's the big consequence of letting him go there anyway? Like, don't they hate him anyway? Why not they actually him go mentioned the paying. They actually mentioned. They they said um, if you think like the the Dursley like dad said like if you think I'm paying for him to like get lectured by some demented old fool or something. Um, so, you know, implying that he would actually be play, be paying for Harry's, you know, tutelage or whatever. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. And I was like, going to be like, oh, yeah. So I'm, I assume that Hagrid's now going to retort this by saying like, oh, the Dursleys don't actually have to pay for anything, but he, he yeah. didn't address it at all. So yeah, that's right. Why, so I still have, don't uh, know if the Dursleys are actually paying for it or not. But the well, thing but is, he's got like a million dollars. But Harry, Hagrid was letting on like they didn't have a choice. Like it, it was completely Harrod's cho ha Harry's choice whether he wanted to go there or not. Hmm. Whether he wanted to go to Hogwarts, that is. It's not clear, so, is it, in the film? Yeah, I don't know, like, if they're paying, because Dur the Dursley dude fucking thought he was paying for it. And, you know, why would he be thinking that? Does he have any reason for thinking that, apart from just... Like, I can't imagine that he'd be so hell-bent on moving to the middle of nowhere just on the the assumption alone that he would be paying for it. <laughs> like, he must have known yeah. that he had to pay for it, you know? But yet, you know, at the you know the very start of the film, sort of, you know, the whole interaction with Harry and the Dursleys and everything that actually really reminded me of my parents. Oh, does it? Is that how your life was? Were you, were you, um, Harry? Yeah, like, no, well, I wasn't. I wasn't exactly the same. Like, he's sort of, you know, portrayed as kind of the Cinderella character, isn't he? Like, he has to like do chores yeah. and shit like that, but. Just the whole notion of the fact that you're living in this house where these people actually despise you and there's no love for you at all from oh, the people who are supposed life, to be Johnny? your parents. Yeah, that is sort of what I have with my parents. Yeah, that that, that was the one thing. Like, because I find I find find Harry sort of hateable, right? But there, yes. I was like, huh? Actually, I kind of know how he feels here. Like, that is kind of a rough thing. Like, I really. <clears throat> see how it's not nice to g sort of grow up in a home where your parents actually just show you no love at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe it has traumatized them in some way, I don't know. But <laughs> also a recurring theme is that he's like supposed to be a lot like Voldemort, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's supposed to be similar to him. Yeah, like, he gets the same, like, he gets the, 
the wand, right? He buys the wand. But yeah, yeah, that's right. The and it's the it's wand. from the phoenix that uh, it's from the phoenix that like, you know, the phoenix that you know, gave its feather to this wand. Like it only gave one other feather, you know, and and that went into the wand of Voldemort, or he who shall not be named, or whatever. So mm -hmm. that was the one thing where it was like, you know, he pretty much held a Voldemort wand, and he. Immediately, like, when, like, like, wind started sweeping and it was, like, super powerful and everything, like, kind of dark in a way, you know, where it was, like, I don't know, he was, like, almost kind of a weird Voldemort himself. And then there was this other fucking instance, which I don't remember, it might have been even before that. Oh, look at that. We need to lure her away, I think. How do we do that? Is this still the Mrs. Norris cat thing? Oh, what is this now? Yeah, she's right there. I think we need to cast a spell on something to... Can I, like, make my... show myself? Like, hello? That oh, doesn't do anything. The fuck? How do you get past there? Like, you need to sort of catch your attention by doing... Oh, wait. We I saw Peeves earlier. But I thought he'd just destroy. Oh, maybe this one? Probably not. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, she's coming. Yeah, I just. Meow. I think we're actually done now, though. Oh, thank God. <laughs> no, not like that, but let me just say this is like a really, really long level. Yeah. Like an insanely long level. Mm hmm. Look, there they are. There's the Weasleys. Yeah, that's why those checkpoints in between always felt like such a relief. As a kid as well. Just look at them, they fucking know the castle inside out. What the hell is that? They just don't say a word, they like come up to you like that. It's, it's like just... a given. Also, so no, no, wait, maybe they don't actually know that Harry's around. Oh I'm yeah, that's probably invisible. good. So I'm just following them quietly. I'm just making whatever use I can out of my uh, invisibility. Meanwhile, I'm just finding myself in their like creepy sex dungeon where they're like torturing animals and humans alike. Ah. The sort of dark shit that they didn't want. The deep me. dark rape dungeon, perhaps. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck, Harry? Do what you are you doing here? Again? With the beans? Harry, 25 beans. Wait. That's it. uh, it's like That's a mice problem. Need. Or a That's rat problem they have. Like, <laughs> if you leave a bunch of Bertie Bot's beans around, you get like a gnome problem. Like, because they like feed on that, Thanks, pretty much. We really needed these. Remember, they really needed these? Yeah, like it's like there's a weird payoff at the end of the game where they actually do something with all the beans that you've given them. Oh, okay. Alright. I can dig that. This is actually quite a short game, I think. Like, I feel like there's hardly anything more after this before the end of the game. But yeah, I, I do feel like we should probably end the session yeah, probably fairly end, soon. End the session... Well, that was a good, a good few. I'd say we eked out maybe four parts from that. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'll say, I'll say, thanks for watching, and uh, mm -hmm. and as I, as I always say at the end of these let's play parts, I say farewell for now, but not forever. <laughs>